Thank you, yes. So uh, I'll be talking about how uh, strong field gravity and uh, MHD, magnetic fields, uh, affect circumbinary disk physics. So this is, uh, so the, the, the idea is that we want to uh, predict accurate uh, electromagnetic signatures of binary black holes, uh, primarily supermassive bla b binary black holes. So these are uh, binaries that are, exist after, at the centers of merged galaxies. So if you have two galaxies that merge, the black holes at their, at their centers uh, will eventually uh, form a binary. And uh, this is, um, uh, so we're, we're kind of in a, in a race to detect binary black holes with LIGO. And we want, we're, we're doing these simulations to, to come up with the, with the first accurate electromagnetic predictions of these events that have not been seen in either gravitational waves or in uh, light. So that, that's the, the main goal of, of this project. And so uh, here is an il illustration of, of the, the, the global simulation domain and then zoomed in pictures of the, the binary. Um, so red here is, is, in, is uh, so plot here is the log of the density. So, and the color scheme, which I will use consistently throughout the talk is blue is low, red is high. So, <coughs> so this is the bulk of the disk surrounding the binary and this is a uh, tenuous gas that falls onto the binary, and here's a zoomed in picture of one of the black holes. So we resolve the black holes. This is a GR calculation, um, and there are event horizons, and uh, the, 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 it covers a vast range of length scales. So, so uh, do we think these things exist? Well, uh, well we know that at, in the centers of most galaxies, there are supermassive black holes. We know that galaxies merge, so there must be su supermassive black holes that interact with each other. And whether or not they, they form tight, close binaries is an open question. However, we do spatially resolve uh, binaries at parsec, subparsec scales, and there's spectroscopic evidence now that, that suggests that there's actually uh, there's, uh, there, there, there could be binaries at milliparsec scales. So, so we, have strong, uh, we, have, we have a strong inclination that there, there are closed binaries. <coughs> the ones that we observe in the electromagnetic band uh, are not strong gravitational wave sources yet. Um, they, they often require many more millions of years to emit their, their binding energy uh, via gravitational waves or via gas dynamics uh, through dynamical friction processes. Um, in order to get closer, uh, but uh, they are uh, they are interacting in their 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 binary system. So, um, so that that's an encouraging note. And so we want to, uh, however, uh, so the the ones we're interested in are even closer than these that are spatially resolved. And so we need to identify them either in the time domain or in, or spectroscopically, uh, meaning you know, the energy spectrum of the light that you you see from these uh, circumbinary disks. And so in order to get accurate uh, predictions, we have to have very sophisticated models that simulates the light from these, these uh, bright disks uh, around the black holes. So that's, that's what we want to do. And why, why do we want to do it? Well, because you can do a lot of interesting science. <laughs> if you know, uh, if you identify uh, supermassive black holes, uh, and they're binaries. You can, you, uh, and you you uh, can gather a population of them. Then you can understand how uh, uh, how merger uh, mergers uh, control the the the, ga the uh, large scale galaxy uh, history of, of of these of these uh, uh, <laughs> systems. So so you can understand how uh, hierarchical high hierarchical uh, structure formation happens. Uh, as, y as you get a uh, population of supermassive black holes and their spins or masses that tells you how uh, they've evolved over time. And you can also, with, uh, with both uh, uh, electromagnetic surveys, so PANSTARS and uh, LSST, so these are high cadence all sky surveys and the reason why you want high cadence in all sky is because these are not, <laughs> s not expected to be very uh, common Ob objects, so we you need to look all over for them. They haven't been observed yet, so they must be relatively uh, uh, infrequent, um, or because you have to actually capture them at a specific moment in their history uh, in order to identify them as a binary. 
Um, and uh, so w people are, are hoping to look for them in the, in the electromagnetic uh, band. Uh, and then there's also various gravitational wave observatories that hope to look for them. So I haven't listed LIGO here because uh, LIGO is sensitive to stellar mass black holes that are uh, not expected to be in gaseous environments, so they, they won't be very bright uh, light sources. However, uh, ELISA, or the NGO, is, uh, is, in a, is planned to be launched uh, you know, in 20 years. Uh, but in the meantime, there are various uh, pulsar timing arrays uh, set up. So these are pulsars in space, and pulsar pulsars are very uh, sensitive clocks and they can detect distortions in the space-time uh, between that pulsar and you, and so it can detect a passing wave. Uh, and that can be used to, to create a network of these sor sor sorts of uh, um, network or an array of uh, these gravitational wave detectors. So those are sensitive to supermassive black hole masses, so they would be useful for this. And so if you have... Uh, Light, sig uh, light signature that, that identifies it as a binary, then you can use it to constrain your gravitational wave source and vice versa. So that helps with uh, localization and identification of the sources. But plus you can do a lot of interesting physics because gravitational waves uh, probe or are emitted from totally different mechanisms than light. Light comes from hot gas uh, that is emitted through synchrotron <coughs> from strawing mechanisms. However, gra gravitational wave uh, waves emit from uh, time-varying uh, quadrupolar moments of the mass distribution. So that's really the, the gravitational waves tell you about the mass and spins of the black holes, and the, the light tells you how the gas responds to that varying space-time. So, so we would be able to uh, constrain our theoretical models even better using both sources of information, because they're very orthogonal. And also, it's very interesting in the cosmological sense because if you identify a, a characteristic uh, emission line uh, from the source and uh, the gravitational waves tell you the distance to that source, and so you can use it as a, uh, as a unique distance uh, uh, redshift correlation, and it can be used to uh, constrain uh, cosmology in a, in, in a new way. So we need accurate predictions, ac accurate theor theoretical models, so that we can identify these sources as binaries and use them to perform the interesting science that we wish to. So how uh, we, the long time plan uh, of our project is to do this in a, hierarchar hier in a hierarchical way. So we zoom in, as mentioned yesterday, so we, do, we would like to do a series of Zoom in simulations where we start with a galaxy, uh, a galaxy merger simulation. We we take their data and then we feed it into a, a, our kind of simulation where we're in the uh, post-Newtonian regime. So these are these are Newtonian calculations where where Newtonian gravity is is only used, and we do post-Newtonian uh, calculations where we solve Einstein's equations uh, perturbatively. And then we perform general relativistic MHD simulations to, to see how the gas responds to the time-varying uh, potential of the binary. And then there are numerical relativity simulations that can't run as long as we can, but they can, uh, they do everything, uh, you know, they <laughs> solve the nonlinear Einstein equations. So um, they can uh, follow the black holes to merger, uh, wh whereas we, uh, can only follow it up to about you know, 8m, 10m of separation, and being a uh, characteristic length scale of the space time because of, uh, length and time in GR uh, uh, go hand in hand. And so m is the mass of, the, is a, of a black hole, okay, so, or, or the total mass of the system. And so, um, so for instance, uh, uh, 4m is the diameter of a non-spinning black hole, so um, that's the uh, you know that's the event horizon of the system. So you can um, 
So anyway, so uh, yeah, so we want to eventually use our simulation data to feed into the numerical relativity data, and then you can um, feed that back after the black holes have merged. You can feed that back into our code uh, to uh, once a black hole ha the the merged remnant black hole has settled down into a stationary uh, uh, space time. Uh, you can use then our code harm 3D uh, to to simulate the response of the disk from from that merger event. So just to give you a brief outline, it's uh, harm 3D is just a is your typical you know high resolution shock capturing <coughs> Eulerian MHD code uses uh, cons constrained transport to to uh, impose a, the no monopoles constraint, um, uh, but it uses dynamic uh, fixed mesh room which I'll go into later, which is a little weird. Um, it's, it's old but new, and I'll, I'll, I'll go into it later. So, um, so our key, ch so uh, before I uh, uh, continue, the, the, the reason why this paradigm is, is this, this phase of evolution is important is because we can tell how the disk responds to the in spiral, uh, which, which the GR uh, uh, phase Cannot because they sh they have to start their simulations very close to each other, so we can explore a, a really uh, important phase of the evolution of the binary. So the key challenges: well, we have a lot of physics, we have a lot of uh, uh, dynamic range and length scales and time scales, and uh, we need to put all this together. So we have GR, we have ther uh, relatively simple th thermodynamics right now. Uh, in terms of uh, cool a radiative cooling function to, to keep the disk uh, relatively thin. And we, uh, we have post-processing uh, tools to, to simulate the radiative output of the, of the simulation. And uh, we also want uh, an accurate uh, uh, representation of the space-time. So as I mentioned, we do this in a perturbative sense, uh, and, but we still have event horizons on our domain, so all of the material that falls into the black hole is uh, causally disconnected from the rest of the domain. So that, that's, that's a novel aspect of our, our, our approach. And we, uh, uh, key uh, emphasis is that we want to establish real, realistic initial conditions for our, our simulation. So we want to evolve long enough so that the disk settles down from the initial conditions and so that we, we get to a state that we expect to see in, in, in space. And so we need to perform many, many orbits and doing this in the post-Newtonian regime allows us to do that. And uh, we've had to de develop a, a, a series of tools to do this. So we've needed to resolve the black holes. That means we need um, uh, to move more cells to the black hole regions, yet we want to also cover the disk in a certain way that we resolve the turbulence that, that arises there. And that has, that has led us to do this FMR approach where we use uh, spherical-like coordinates far out in the disk, but we, we warp those coordinates so that it focuses more cells around the black holes, and I'll get into that later. And then we also need to evenly distribute the computational effort for calculating the space time uh, that is heterogeneous because of the way, ways we solve Einstein's equations perturbatively, and uh, I'll mention that a little bit. So we've worked on load balancing, and also we've uh, just recently developed a magnetic monopole cleaner that uh, 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 relaxes the magnetic field into a, a non-divergenceless uh, state so that we can interpolate our data onto different coordinate patches and systems so that we can feed our simulation data into others and vice versa. So that this was a, an, I get, as far as I know, an outstanding numerical problem in GR, um, but it, people have been doing this in, in flat space Cartesian systems. So, so why, do, why do we need bl uh, blue waters? Well, it, it, uh, our older runs, so where we, if you notice the movie, there was this black cutout around the black holes. So before, we weren't resolving the black holes. They weren't on our domain. We were focusing on the, the, the influence the black holes had on the disk. So we were lo just looking at the disk and not on the material that falls onto the black holes. So those were, were modest runs, and those only require um, you know, 100,000 blue waters SUs. 
Uh, however, we want to now resolve the black holes, so that increases our resolution requirements. So if you just naively do this, uh, if you add more cells just to uniformly to, to resolve the black holes, you need something like uh, 10, 10 uh, a billion blue waters SUs, which I don't think anyone has gone. Uh, so. Uh, Okay, well, we, we weren't fortunate enough to, to get that. So, um, uh, so we, we had to be smart, so we optimized uh, the space-time calculator and also we, we implemented this, uh, this warp system that I'll talk about later, I keep on alluding to. Um, and so that has helped us re reduce the cell count and made the uh, estimates uh, for our, our runs uh, 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 possible uh, for our, our allocation. So now uh, these runs are about a million Blue Waters SUs, which, uh, which fits, so. Uh, so our, so, yeah, so the, uh, our PN code, so it covers the entire domain, I know, through the event horizon, so we can follow matter penetrating the event horizon. Um, and also it, it goes, extends out to infinity, so we, we have various zones, so we have the far zone, which is uh, the one that's not close. And then we have uh, uh, the near zone, which is that, that surrounds the binaries, but not right around each black hole. And then we have the inner zone, which is the space-time region around each black hole. And then we have buffer zones that buffer in between the zones so that you can match the space-times together. So this allows you to uh, forget about the space-time calculation. You say it's solved, and now we, let's just worry about the matter that, that exists there. And so we can tailor our grid based upon the constraints of our matter dynamics. And so that, that's what, why we really wanted to do this, because we, uh, we don't, because cause solving Einstein's equations have its own uh, re uh, resolution requirements. And it, you typically have you know, nested box, uh, boxes following the black holes. And we didn't want to use that approach, because that would in, uh, in, uh, increase a lot of uh, diffusion at the AMR boundaries. Uh, that are required for the for numerical relativity simulations. So, the diffusion of the gas at those boundaries and the dis dissipation of angular momentum. So, so we do simulations of many orbits, many orbits of uh, the the <coughs> gas around the disk. And so, if you have a very uh, dissipative uh, scheme that 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 led you to lose angular momentum, then you wouldn't have very accurate estimates for the accretion rate onto the black holes. So that's why we use a spherical-like coordinate system so that angular momentum is conserved very well. And uh, yeah, so, so this is a, a, a new approach. So here is, this illustrates the Ricci scalar, which should be zero in a, in a uh, vacuum space-time. So in, our, in the supermass binary black case, uh, uh, the gas is not, split, is not expected to be uh, gravitated gravitating strongly, so, so it's not a strong gravitational source, so that's why our gravity model is vacuum. And so here, uh, so here in this color map, um, so I lied, um, this is the only non, this is the only different color map uh, uh, on this slide. So uh, here purple is, is high and red is low, and so you see that you, the Ricci scalar is largest near the, near the, uh, in the buffer zones near the black holes but is, is small pretty much everywhere else. And uh, so, so if you were to integrate the, the mass associated with this Ricci scalar, so this, this would be like the fake mass, um, it would uh, be uh, very insignificant. So we've uh, performed calculations of, uh, uh, at different separations uh, with the different uh, PN orders. And we found that uh, 20m is a good separation. Um, I, I can go into this a little bit later. So we've also characterized a, an electromagnetic source. And this uh, uh, electromagnetic signature, this is a period, period, periodic signal from uh, the, the binary interacting with the gas. And this is a, a characteristic frequency. And we've, on Blue Waters, we've looked at uh, a different, um, uh, different order of accuracy, so we've turned down the accuracy <laughs> over gravity, 
and we've found that this uh, frequency diminishes. So, so we we this suggests that we need 2 p.m. in this regime, but that it also uh, it it shows that uh, gravity is actually an important influence uh, in getting out the 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 accurate electromagnetic signatures. And uh, so uh, this warped grid, I'll just briefly mention. So we pinch uh, the grid resolution near each black hole. And uh, we can, this is all tunable by parameters. It's parameterized. And we've done tests. You can uh, talk to me later about this. So we've done flux tube tests, and this works really well. <coughs> and so right now, we're performing um, uh, the, the full thing. So this is a. Here, this is a 2D hydro test, but we're doing 3D MHD runs right now of the system. So this just shows you uh, a movie of what uh, what was illustrated in the in the title page, and um, this goes for a while. And I'll conclude in that we have uh, I have a conclusion slide, but I'll let this run. So uh, I yeah, so we have a lot of the tools in place, and we're currently putting them. Uh, we've put them all together, and we're now. Uh, running the full thing on Blue Waters. We have till, I think, September to finish our allocation now. And, uh, uh, but there's lots of physics that we wish to in incorporate, like radiation feedback, uh, more sophisticated thermodynamics. And uh, that would actually require us to use ma you know, many more Blue Waters SUs. <coughs> so that's our hope in the future to, to implement and to uh, exploit Blue Waters even more. So uh, thank you.